Sorry, not sorry. Mm. Boom. You got a boom. Mm. Embarrassingly for everybody. It got a boom. Embarrassingly for everybody. That just snuck out. I know. That's not something I say. <laughs> but it is. It's absolutely worthy of a boom. <laughs>
stir that all through and then pretty quickly we have to pour it into our baking tray and get it into the fridge to set. Talk about instant. How quick was that? That was like a minute, I reckon. All right, there's our polenta, all sticky and gooey and delicious. And, ow, without burning my hand. Oh, I've got sad little weak wrists. Here we go. Let me try that again. There we go. Straight into our lined and oiled baking tray. I like to line mine with some um, baking paper that's sticking out the edges so that once this is set, you can just lift it out. In theory, if you have oiled the tray well enough before you put the polenta in, you should be able to just turn it out. But because I use such a large quantity of cheese, because cheese is life, I need to be able to make sure that I can get the polenta out um, once it's set. So we're gonna spread this right out. Use my spatula for this. Oh, yum. Uh, if I was feeling really impatient, I'd just eat it like that. Gooey, cheesy, herby, polenta goodness. But trust me, if you can manage to see yourself through to the baking stage, a polenta chip is a great, great joy. And they're one of those things that if you put them on the table, how many people fight over them, hey? All the people. All the people fight for all the bites of the polenta chips. Now you can be as precious as you like about spreading this out. I actually haven't done too badly today. Quite often mine's a bit lumpy and all over the shop. But I'm trying to set a good example. I'm spreading that relatively nicely all over the fan, all over the, the fan, all over the pan. All right, first step done. That took just like three minutes, I reckon. I'm bad at estimating time. How long do you think it took? Four minutes. Four minutes. Oh, it wasn't too far off. So like four minutes and that is ready to go into the fridge. That goes into the fridge for half an hour or until it's set enough for you to slice it up into your chips and then we're going to bake it. But while it's setting, I'm going to show you how to make some incredibly delicious and easy sauces and we're going to go the whole gamut here. We're going to go from the really fancy right through to a retro 80s number and then all the way back to the easiest thing you've ever seen which is also in my opinion the most delicious and decadent dec decadent 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 so this is going into the fridge i'll be back in a second i've also held over some polenta for some dusting but we'll get to that later so i'll put that out of the way excuse me i'll be right back It is sauce time. Our polenta is in the fridge setting and doing its thing. So we've got a little bit of time up our sleeves to make some sauces to go with the polenta chips. And I'm gonna be really honest right now and say for the last 10 years, I've been chasing the ultimate polenta chip sauce experience because at one of my favorite restaurants in Sydney, we had it once 10 years ago, this incredible combination that I'll talk more about later. And ever since we've been trying to recreate it. Is that fair? Is it fair to say that? Fair totally to, fair. Totally fair to say that. All right, so we're going to start with the more complex of the sauces first. And by complex, I don't really mean very complex because I like to keep things simple. This is a green aioli. I want to call it green goddess because I feel like everything that's got loads of herbs in it is called green goddess. And this has loads of herbs. So we're going to start with what every aioli recipe starts with, which is some egg yolks. Oh, so unprofessional. I've got eggshell on the outside. I thought it was so neat and clean. There you go. Stuck to the side, bit of eggshell that we don't need. Anywho, so two egg yolks into our food processor. And then we're gonna add in some crushed garlic and some Dijon mustard. I just like the pungency of both of those things in my aioli. And frankly, garlic is very necessary to all aioli. I've got friends who would say it's not aioli unless it's got garlic in it. Um, and then we're just going to uh, process that up with a whole lot of herbs. And you can put whatever green herbs into this you like. But I've got in here, I've got some dill, I've got some chives, I've got parsley, and I've got loads of mint because, oh my God, mint. Oh, oh, so beautiful. It smells like a spring garden. So we're going to pop that all in there like that. And with that, I'm going to add some lemon juice. One of the things I want to tell you quickly about lemons is if you're worried your lemon is not going to be juicy enough or release its juice, Warm it up a little bit in your hands and give it a good squeeze. It breaks all the cells inside 
and makes them nice and juicy or you can give it a good old roll on the table. It's not a secret, lots of people know how to do it. Anywho, that one's been pummeled nicely, so... Not a secret now. Definitely not. And it shouldn't be a secret. Everybody should know how to do that, right? To get the juiciness out of your lemons. I think lemons are probably my most utilised ingredient in my kitchen. Do you reckon, what, could, could you name anything, my friend, that I use more than lemon? Put a whole lot of lemon in there. Mmm, that is a tough call. A couple of pips in there. Mm. Oh well. Bit of fibre, right? So a whole lot of lemon. I like my aioli nice and lemony too. Look, in deference of other people eating this, I'm going to get the pips out. Two, three. Not that you'd notice at the end of the day. And two more in there. See, this is real. This is life. Lemon chips and lemons everywhere. So I'm going to blitz that up. Ready? I'm not allowed to talk while this is on, I've been told, because you can't hear me. Ready? So quick. And then, boom, we're just going to scrape down the sides, just because there's still a few. Oh, look, another pip. Pippiest lemons in the world. Pippity pip. All right, I think I got them all. So we're just going to scrape that down a little bit. You don't need to be too thorough because that'll get mixed up again, but I'm just poking down the big bits, making sure that they all get in there. Now, I'm adding a secret ingredient this time. You don't have to put this in. This is a quarter of a jalapeno, so a really hot green chilli. And I'm just going to add it in for some extra heat because why not, right? I'm going to blitz that up quickly too. Shh. Ta-da, done. And then from here, all we're going to do is with the motor running on the food processor, we're going to add about a cup of a neutral oil. I'm using rice bran oil, but you can use grapeseed oil or anything else that is really neutral in flavour. And I'm going to balance it with a little bit of really good quality olive oil. I never do this with all olive oil because the flavour of the olive oil will dominate. And really you want all the flavours that are in the aioli to come through, the garlic and the herbs and the, hab the I was going to say habanero, but it's jalapeno. So. Excuse me while I turn the motor on and do a little bit more of the blending process. Here we go. Now you can see it's gone a really creamy colour. Can you see that? Can you see how creamy looking that's gone? It was very clear before and just a whole lot of chopped up green herbs. But through our processing and adding of the oil, this has turned into a beautiful mayonnaise consistency. It's whipped up and it's changed colour and gone all glossy and creamy. And now I'm going to have a bit of a taste for balance. That is so good. It is so fresh and creamy. Oh, I feel like just, just a whole, a whole spoonful of that. That is incredible. I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of salt in it, but that is, that's a really personal thing. You could leave it like this if, if you taste it and decide that that's what you want. I'm just gonna pop in a tiny, tiny little bit of salt. Cause I put salt in everything just to heighten the flavours. All right, here we go. One more time. I think she's done. Easy as that. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a bowl And 
And, hmm, I never have all the things. I've forgotten a spatula, I'll be right back. Tricky little bugger. Am I allowed to say that? I don't think I'm allowed to say that. All right, I'm just gonna pop this into a bowl. Oh yes, so green and delicious. So green. This is one of those um, sauces that I'm desperate to get every last bit of out of the, out of the mixing bowl because it's so delicious. The Green Goddess Aeoli is made, and now we have to make another dip that lives up to that one because it is, I promise you, so incredibly good. You've got all that minty freshness of the herbs and then the slow burn of the jalapeno at the back, and it's obviously creamy and garlicky and delicious. So how do you top that, if you even want to try and top that? And I'm um, <clears throat> not ashamed to say I like to go a bit retro. This is a dip that is just like, for me, the epitome of the 80s. And I'm not gonna lie, I love a good classic French onion dip made with, yes, I'm not even gonna lie about it, French onion packet soup. I just about grew up on this stuff, did you? No. You didn't have French onion dip in your house? Oh, dip, not soup. No, 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 we didn't eat the soup. <laughs> no one uses this for soup. Nobody uses this for soup, they use it for dip. So what you get is your- We should make it as soup. We should try it, see I what it's actually... Soup. It's got instructions on the back for how to make it a soup, and I looked at that and went, I will never read that. We should be the first person... In the world. <laughs> ever ...to, <laughs> to use French to make French onion soup. So what I'm doing is I'm making classic French onion dip, and it's no secret that this is basically just a way of flavouring sour cream. I said basically again, but it is. Basically, at the heart and soul of it, it is a way to salt up and flavour sour cream. You're laughing, it's true. What? What? Correct me. Am I wrong? Simply. Simply. Okay, so this is just a whole lot of sour cream. This is just an excuse to eat salty sour cream. Let's not get fancy about it. So our sour cream goes in and... Does it have a tear line? Where's my tear line? There it is. I knew there was one. No. Nope. Not designed for tearing. <laughs> This is so embarrassing. I can't even open it. Oh, thank goodness for kitchen knives, all right? There you go. That's what I my... think they had scissors in the 80s. 100% what my shield knife was um, designed to do, cut open <laughs> bags of French onion soup. So in goes all our French onion soup. I've heard a rumour that you can get low salt French onion soup for this dip. I'm not even going to bother doing that. And then we're going to add some mayonnaise. Now, you can use a whole egg mayonnaise because that's the creamiest, most delicious kind, but quite frankly, if you want to go light, you can go light. I don't see the point if you're mixing it with sour cream myself. I just go full fat everything for this. We're not pretending to be fancy. And then we're gonna mix this in. The only thing, ooh, oof, oh my. Lo I'm losing French onion soup. The only thing that I do differently to a lot of the other, <laughs> can I call this a recipe even? The only thing that I do differently to other recipes for this out there is I like to actually put a tiny bit of yogurt into mine because I put yogurt into just about everything because I like the tang and the slight sourness of it. So what I'll do is I'll give this a good mix and then in a really fancy addition, I'm gonna add some Greek yogurt because I think it makes it creamy, adds this lovely sour edge to it. Oh, I love yogurt. I'm just gonna add that to my French onion soup mix. Then all you have to do once this is mixed is let it sit long enough for the little pieces of <coughs> dried onion in the soup to rehydrate and get soft and delicious for your dip. And I'm gonna pretend to be fancy right now, and I mean literally pretend and add some fresh chives in, just because I like green things. I'm gonna save some for on top as well. I like green things. Do you like green things? I think that was evidenced by how many herbs I put into our last dip, right? I said I use um, lemons more than anything else in the kitchen. That would be closely followed, I imagine, by mint. I put mint in everything, usually. Okay. That does not 
look like anything other than my 80s childhood. And I'm just going to grab a bowl to serve that up into. This, if you put this out at a party, people will be like, oh, French onion dip, ha ha ha, you're so funny. But I guarantee it's one of the first things that goes every time. If you serve that with some Jats crackers, oh, you are onto a winner and you will be popular. It's that guilty pleasure, I think. Everybody pretends that they're beyond the, the French onion dip, but really nobody is. Everyone's got a place in their heart for the, for the French onion. Oh, I found a pocket of unmixed soup granules. Make sure you mix them all up. What do you reckon? Let's have a look underneath. Oh, there's another pocket. Should I leave it for someone to discover? It's like a gold mine of MSG right there. I'll do my job properly and mix it all in. Oh, that smells so good, I'm not gonna lie. Oniony, creamy. Let's have a taste. You could just leave me alone with a Netflix series, a box of crackers and that, and I would be a happy, happy lady. All right, here we go. Let's serve that one up and get on to our third dip. Could it get any simpler? If you're short on time, keep a packet of French onion soup in the pantry and you can either be the first people in the world to actually make it into soup or use it eternally for making dip. I'm not even gonna to pretend to clean that off because I will lick that later. Or now while no one's looking. Mm, there you go. Dip number two, classic 80s French onion soup dip with an added bit of tang from some beautiful Greek yogurt. So that's dip number two. And because the third dip is so easy, I'm just gonna get straight into it. I bet you didn't think it could get easier than the French onion soup. Did you think it could get easier than the French onion soup dip? It can't. Oh, watch me, it can. <laughs> and I think this might be the one you've been waiting for as well. So let me tell you about a transcendental experience that I had back in the day. The first time I had polenta chips in a restaurant, they were served with blue cheese dipping sauce or gorgonzola cheese dipping sauce. And it was one of those moments I have chased ever since. And I have tried so many blue cheese sauces and so many different gorgonzola dips and dressings and things. I've melted cheese, I've whisked cheese, I've done all sorts of things, but right now I'm gonna show you the easiest thing in the world and it is some dolce gorgonzola so the slightly sweet gorgonzola blue cheese gee that is funky oh i love it and and this is a recipe that i read from an italian chef in italy who was showing it to a, a writer for bon appetit magazine so these are reputable sources and all this chef did to make his amazing blue cheese sauce was, I'm gonna save some off to the side in case I wanna crumble it on top, but really, all we're gonna do is smash up our gorgonzola. There's no elegant way to do this. I'm not even gonna to pretend to be elegant. I'm just gonna start mashing that up. And I'm not even kidding. The only thing you add to it is some thickened cream. If that isn't decadent, I don't know what is. But we're just gonna break that up into the cream and keep going until it's a consistency that we like. At this stage, I'm really just gonna go for it with a potato masher because I want the I want the consistency that I want, which is pretty. <laughs> it doesn't sound nice, does it? Or maybe it does. All right, hang on. Let me put some more cream in. Put some more cream in and you can hear the joy of this yourself. I'm gonna be really quiet now, ready? Ready, here we go. <coughs> you might think that sounds gooey and ooey, but to me, oh. <coughs> the sound of joy. 
That is the sound of a really beautiful food experience coming together. Oh, I wish you could smell the pungent funkiness that is going on over here. How, how far away are we from smell vision do you reckon? Oh, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? All right, yeah. good. Come back, come back in a couple of weeks and I'll see if you can smell this. Here we go. So it's breaking down beautifully. Now you could really go at this until it's incredibly smooth, but quite frankly, I like the lumps of <laughs> blue cheese. Who doesn't? Who doesn't like the lumps of blue cheese? I suppose people that don't like blue cheese, but those people are not my friends. Oh. <laughs> All right, there's still room in my world for you because it means there's more blue cheese for me. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit thinner with the cream, purely so that it's easy to scoop up with our polenta chips. But the cream just loosens up the gorgonzola and the creaminess doesn't take anything away or detract from the beautiful gorgonzola that we've got in there. And I think that's why this sauce works so well, or in my opinion, that's why it works so well. If you start heating the cheese or adding extra things to it or putting garlic in or salt, pepper or anything, you're detracting from the main event, which is that gorgeous, sweet, funky gorgonzola. Make it a tiny bit thinner and then I think we're done. This again is entirely up to you. If you want it thick, go for it thick. I'm just gonna thin it out a tiny bit more. You want to come in close and have a look at this? You tell me, is that thin enough to dip your chip in? To dip, you reckon you get a nice scoop of that? Yeah. Like that? Oh, yeah. All right. And yeah, you, you just don't lose anything by adding cream to it. You only gain. I don't know why I even bothered making the others. They're really good, but that is the main event. All right, I'm gonna pop that into a bowl. And you love that I'm putting it into a, a more polite, smaller bowl, when the reality is I am gonna eat this whole thing. So I'm pretending to be polite by serving it into a smaller bowl, but there is nothing polite about this dip. Everybody will fight for the last scrapings and then they'll move on to the other sauces and lament that this one is gone. And sorry, not sorry. Mm. Boom. You mm. got a boom. Mm. Embarrassingly for everybody. It got a boom. Embarrassingly for everybody. That just snuck out. I know. That's not something I say. <laughs> But it is, it's absolutely worthy of a boom. Oh my goodness. All right, let's line them up before we go and get the others. All right, we went, what did we do? Mm. Green goddess aioli. Classic 80s French onion with a yogurty twist. And our gorgonzola blue cheese dipping sauce. All I can say is we're just gonna have to finish making the polenta chips and I'm just going to have to try them one at a time until I can decide which one the winner is. Right, polenta part two time. I'm just, I'm going to do this. I wasn't going to do it. I can't help it. It gets this <laughs> really great rubbery texture. It just makes me want to smack it. It's got like a like a bounce to it. Well, that's appealing. <laughs> no, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It means it's solid enough for you to be able to cut it into its batons, which is what I'm going to do now. So, out comes our polenta. Oh, bang! Sorry. Did that look like I know what I'm doing? Most of the time, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I look like I know what I'm doing, but I do. Look at that. Oh, if you could smell that, cheesy and delicious. The biggest problem I have when I make this polenta dish is that I'm not really neat at cutting up the batons or the batons for, um, for my chips. I get really uneven chips, but that's real, right? That's life. That's the way we go. So I'm just going to cut these as evenly as I can. Don't judge me. I have terrible spatials as anyone who knows me will tell you. Really bad at judging straight lines. 
people's character. Terrible judge of everything, really. <laughs> What's that say about me? Uh, I'm a terrible judge of character, and you're very lucky. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Talk myself up. All right. Anywho. Do you know what? Because the, these are nice rectangular battens when you finish cutting them out, you can play a really great game of Jenga with these. Stack them up like a tower. In fact, is that how they served them in the restaurant where we first had them? Did they have them sort of like no, stacked no. Jenga style? No. No? I've just seen that in other places since then. I feel like this restaurant is remaining nameless. It is. Nameless. The nameless Sydney restaurant that no, centres. It's actually called Nameless. It's not called Nameless. It has no. a name. It's a good name for a restaurant though. It is Nameless. Well, there's a place called No Name somewhere, isn't there? I it shut down. Did it? I'm just saying they're going to be really big chips, aren't they, if I do them like that? Yeah, you've got to do thirds. Like that. Oh, see, look, terrible judge of spatials. Here we go. You want to come over and help. I can nope. sense you itching off camera. What's your rule? Measure twice, cut once. Not a rule of thirds. All right, rule of thirds also sounds good. So is it measure three times and cut once? Anywho, <clears throat> there you go. Do not an end one. That's roughly the size of one of our chips. Now what I'm going to do is pop them on a baking tray, spray them lightly with oil, dust them with some of the reserved polenta, which gives it some, just some added crunch on the outside. And then they can just go into the oven um, at 180 degrees for about half an hour or until the outside is crisped up because they're cooked now. So all you're really looking for in the oven is for the outside to crisp up in a way that appeals to you that, that you like. And if, if you're happy with a light golden touch to them, go for it. If you want them really dark and crunchy and almost a bit leathery on the outside, leave them in a bit longer. I have a great way of making food sound really appealing, don't I? The words I have used today have included rubbery and leathery. Not ways that I would usually describe food. And you slapped it. And I did slap it. Slap that. <clears throat> I also just did that, which is, you know, <laughs> not, not something I should be saying in public or at all, ever. All right. If you want, if you're being really, really fussy and you're serving these to friends, you could just take or you could trim off the edges so that you get these really lovely block shapes. The, you know, the proper chip shapes, but I'm, I'm all for using all of the things and just making use of, of every piece of it. And I, I don't believe in trimming edges. Hey there, I've said it. I don't believe in trimming the edges. There's a place in my world for all the squidgy edge bits. Now, huh, let me just grab the um, spray oil from the cupboard. I just like to spray them lightly with some olive oil to help them crisp up. Because the pan was oiled to begin with, you don't necessarily need to do that, but I'm, I'm erring on the safe side today. And just sprinkling with them with a bit of extra polenta. Again, this is up to you. If you don't like the crunchy hard bits on the outside after they're baked, you don't have to do the polenta. I like it. I like the added texture, the added crunch. I'll just do, do a bit of that. I've only done it on one side today, but if you really wanted to, you could toss them all over. Tossity toss. I'm being terribly lazy today because I can't wait to eat these. That's really the, what it comes down to at the end of the day for me. So, what do you think? Ready to go in the oven? Let's do it. They smell so good! And you can see they're lovely and golden. Can you see that? See how brown they've gone? Crunchy brown. Oh, and they smell herby and buttery and cheesy. A little bit sweet from the tarragon. Oh, I love these. All right, so hot, hot, hot. Let's just throw them on. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. This is life, it doesn't have to be too fancy. She says as she selects the bottom pieces that are the ugly ones. <laughs> now, I'm just going to stack them on because I said before these make really good Jenga pieces, so I'm going to sort of do a little bit of a almost Jenga, a little bit of a tower, turning them over for our polenta side up. 
I'm muttering because I'm so excited to eat these. Here we go. On to the plate. So these are a great thing to serve if you're having friends over and you just need some snacks and some nibbles, but quite frankly, I would eat these on Friday night just for, for dinner as the main event. I think they are incredibly delicious. And you can serve them with whatever sauces you like, but on my pretend lazy Susan here, I wish I really wish this was a lazy Susan that I, so that I could turn this around, but I can't. So we've got our trio of dips. I'm just gonna get rid of my hot tray so I don't burn myself. Right. And in my excitement, there it is. Ta-da! Herbie polenta chips with a trio of dips. Fancy, nostalgic, and just the best ever. And scatter on some herbs. Woohoo! Because garnish. I don't know. What, what, what else can you say about this? Like, what else can you say? What else can you say? Nothing. Nothing. Delicious. What are you going to start with? What I, well, uh, my <laughs> this is the dilemma now is which one, which one do you eat? You know, <laughs> look, I have to do this because I don't believe in cooking the food and then not demonstrating how delicious it is. First up, straight chip, right? Oh my goodness. Even just that, so good. Crunchy on the outside, creamy and cheesy in the middle. Oh my goodness, so that little bit of herb. Oh yeah. Winner, absolute winner. Do I dare disturb the, the green goddess herself? Here we go, into the green goddess. We're double dipping today. I'm not even gonna pretend that we're not. Mm. That is so good. If you like really vibrant, fresh flavors, that is so fresh, tangy, zesty, herby. And that is a living green, delicious flavor. Mm. So good. With my double dip, I'm gonna go straight on to the classic taste of my childhood. Here we go. One, two, three, look at that. I'm gonna have to start another chip after this one. I'm, I'm running out. Chip is running low. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. I don't even know how you decide between them. There is, there is no, there is no, you can't decide between those two. It's just like, this is, this is really full on, hits you in the face with flavor. It's very salty. I swear it's packed with MSG and I don't care, but it's a really distinctive oniony, great, powerful flavor. Certainly incredibly nostalgic for me. But the Green Goddess, tangy, fresh. I don't know, it just depends on how you're feeling. So, let me take this baby here and steal this one from the bottom because it's wide and flat and good for dip. And, here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. So this is, this is what I think polenta chips were made. <laughs> it's oh, melting. It's, well, it's melting because it's all creamy. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's, it's okay? Mm. It's terrible, don't eat it. You don't need to try any of that. You absolutely do not need to eat that. I will do the world a favor. Despise of it. And get rid of that before oh, yeah. anybody else tries it. You should. They were just born to be together. Those two. Oh my god, but it is incredibly intense. So that's it. It really just comes down to what kind of dip you like. If you like herby green light sauces, Green Goddess is your is your best friend. If you like classic nostalgia, ain't no shame in the French onion. But let's be really honest here and say the dip that was made, the dip that was absolutely made to go with the polenta chips, 100% hands down, no questions asked. And I will not judge anybody if they just walk away from every other sauce with polenta chips. The Gorgonzola.
That's it, I'm done. I'm gonna go now. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. The fun food, the joyful food, and as always, the delicious food. And I'm gonna just <clears throat> do what I always do now and stuff my face, bye. <laughs>